It's time to fight some dogs and drop some bombs. Hi guys, it's True here, bringing you another True Review, and today is Iron Wings on the Xbox One. I always keep wanting to call it Iron Sights for some reason, but it's Iron Wings on the Xbox One, priced at the very strange £19.19 in the UK and £23.99 in the US, and it's currently available on the marketplace as we speak. And what we have is a third-person, or first-person, World War II flying arcade combat game. Now, uh, you play as two pilots. You play as Jack, who is a member of the legendary Tuskeki, I think it's pronounced, uh, World War II Squadron, who uh, I believe had a real regiment or a real squadron of uh, fighter pilots. It was an African-American um, only, only squadron. And you also play as his childhood friend, Amelia, who also happens to be a crack pilot and also happens to get assigned to all his missions as well. So... Um, We'll give them that one for gameplay, you know, taking gameplay liberties there. Now that's the case. So kicking off, the game can be played in first person or third person. I strongly suggest it is played in third person, which is default view, because the, the cockpit view, while looking rather nice, was very, very problematic. You didn't have that much field of vision. It was very, very difficult to play. So third person is definitely the uh, the way to go there. The plane controls rather well. You can you can dive bomb and um, you know pull out of uh, dives rather easily. The, you've got the usual kind of tilt controls for for the plane there to to run rotate it on its axis and you have a nice um, I don't know what a better word for it is a loop the loop feature where you can actually do a loop around and end up facing the um, the opposite way which is very very handy due to um, a very very pain the ass gameplay mechanic which I'll, I'll get to a little bit later which actually spoils the game totally but um, for the most part it does control rather rather well now the only issue with the controls that I generally have is the uh, accelerate and decelerate controls for some bizarre reason A is decelerate and B is accelerate I've never come across a game when that is the case I mean when has B ever been accelerate in a game it's uh, very very odd uh, but other than that, all the other commands are very easy to do, locking on targets, cycling targets, assigning your teammates to targets, all very you know quick flick of the, the D-pad and the, and the face buttons, very very easily to, easy to do. And what I love about the game is the game's presentation. It's kind of done in a, a best way I can describe it, it's like a History Channel documentary. The, the story is told through Jack's eyes and he's, um, you see him, he's elderly. He's recounting his missions, he's recounting his uh, experiences in the war to a documentary crew. And I thought that was quite a clever way to convey the story. I've not really seen that um, in the um, in a game before. Obviously, like uh, TV series like Band of Brothers did it rather well, and this is what this is what they're trying to, to convey. And I think it, it, it really hit the spot. Unfortunately, the voice acting's a little bit wishy-washy. Though the, the script that the actors are delivering is uh, is pretty sound and on point, and generally interesting to uh, to listen to. It's just that the delivery could be a little bit better. But uh, yeah, we get in, uh, we get into the gameplay, and uh, this is when a few minor issues start to appear because the first two levels are basically tutorial missions, but they drag on, they go on and on, and uh, don't do an awful good job of conveying the actual game. I mean, if people play this as a demo or or play it in a store, as you know, as, 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 a, as a demo unit, they're probably going to lose interest in the game straight away because the very first mission you're flying over New York, there's no meaningful combat or shooting in it there, and you're just basically flying from A to B and just learning how to lock onto targets and and how to access uh, submissions. The second mission you get to take over is Amelia, and you're on a farm which is suffering from a fire, fire spreading, and you've got to drop bombs, water bombs in this case, onto the fire now to, to dine them out. The uh, bombing instructions are woefully bad. I, from the, from the on-screen description, which was a text description, I had no clue what I was supposed to do. Uh, only from trial and error trying to figure it out. It does actually turn out to be rather easy. But the, the text description, which was meant learning you how to do, 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 drop the bombs, you know, wasn't any help whatsoever. So um, that needs to be improved, in my opinion, because bombing is quite an important aspect of the game, especially what I'm about to tell you. Now, this is the first level where the biggest uh, 
bugbear Copy with that. the gameplay mechanics come to, to light. With these uh, barns you've got to um, drop the bombs on, you've got a time limit. And then when you recount back, you've actually had time limits on the first mission in New York as well. And this kind of prevails throughout the entire game. There's a time limit on everything you do. Every objective has a time limit. Even with objectives that shouldn't really have a time limit, that really have no urgency, there's a, there's a time limit on there, and if you don't accomplish your task by then, you automatically fail and it's the game over. Now, the, the most annoying thing about the game is you never get the chance to enjoy it because you've got these arbitrary time limits that are imposed on every single objective. And I can hand on heart say that throughout the entire playtime of the game, completing the game, all the game's levels, the enemy never actually killed me once in the game. The aircraft didn't take me down, the AAs didn't take me down, the battleships didn't take me down. Nope, no threat whatsoever. No threat whatsoever at all. What took me down on every occasion was either running out of time or me making a mistake and crashing into the ground. Um, I'll readily admit that. But the enemy has zero threat whatsoever in this game. Which is a shame because there's nothing more I like with flying games than having a you know a long drawn out dogfight, taking out the enemies, you know, um, dropping all bombs on the targets, doing a strafing run on the ground, and taking out a line of uh, part, uh, part vehicles, something like that. But the game doesn't let you enjoy the game because these arbitrary time limits are always in there. And to be honest, they are very very strict as well. Some of them, some of them are really strict. Like there's one on the early level where you've got to take three three fleeing battleships down. Now, fair enough, that, that is an example where a time limit is apparent because they are fleeing battleships battleships but other objectives they just shouldn't have a time limit on whatsoever one other great thing about the gameplay as well which I really like liked was the action cam the way you actually um, fight a target or whether it be a ground target or a um, or a, or a flying target is that you lock onto the enemy then you have to obviously with a plane you have to aim slightly ahead of it but once you've locked onto it and start aiming in the right place you start filling up another bar around your crosshair once that fills up you then go into action cam which zooms in really really close and then you've kind of like having a really um, jumpy jagged kind of uh, dog fight with it where you have to kind of take, take the target down now the ground targets this works amazingly well because you can actually target on individual infantry units and you actually take them down and you actually see the, the infantry the soldier actually getting gunned down in your um, in your bullets shredding him, to, shredding him to pieces and I just thought it just added a bit of a more movie kind of like experience to it and I really liked it the only issue with this um, with this action cap which I believe you can actually turn off is that um, sometimes when you get chucked out of it when you go out of range or you Managed to pull out of it yourself. It can be a bit jarring to reorientate yourself where you actually are, and um, crash into the ground or, or another aircraft because of it. In terms of graphics, it's um, passable. It's not fantastic, but it does a serviceable job of uh, of you know creating various different kind of landscapes. The, the city landscapes are probably the worst, but the, the rural and uh, the rural landscapes work, you know, service will be well. End of the day, it's a flying game. You're going to be in the air most of the time, so graphics are really uh, a strong point of any kind of flying simulator game, to be honest with you, in my opinion. It's uh, the planes are uh, well depicted. You can actually tell the difference between the planes, and some missions you do have to get really, really close to some planes for certain objectives. Like for example, when you have to um, have to actually read the fuselage numbers of these bombers that have been infiltrated, you're flying dead close to um, some huge planes, and this is where the controls come to the fore as well. The controls are pretty spot on there because you can actually fly very close to them and be confident that you're not going to get screwed over by poor controls. The sound and music, there's uh, some great uh, rousing kind of like World War II movie inspired uh, tracks on there. Nothing again that's you know immediately outstanding, it's all serviceable, it's all done rather well. As I mentioned previously the voice acting is a little bit on the net side to be honest with you. But it all does a serviceable job. In terms of achievements, it's going to be a very, very easy list. There's no difficulty on this game whatsoever, other than the time limit. As I say, the enemies pose zero threat to you. They're not going to kill you. It's just a case of beating the clock on each objective, which is a crying shame, really, because uh, if I actually let you enjoy the game and remove some of these stupid arbitrary time limits, which is obviously a clear gameplay mechanic, the game would be an awful lot better without it. 
with it in, unfortunately, it is a very frustrating and neutered experience because you don't get to actually enjoy the game at any time. You're always under pressure with the silly clock, and that really drags the game down, in my opinion, which would have been a perfectly serviceable, perfectly enjoyable World War II dogfighting game. So, regrettably, and uh, simply because of this silly clock mechanic I'm going to say this is a definite wait for a sale because at the end of the day this game is kind of like a lower mid-range price title and I think for the money that they're asking there the game just offers too much of a frustrated experience the balance between frustration and enjoyment is unfortunately on the side of frustration hope you enjoyed that review guys please remember to like comment and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next one